It is now time for members' statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Speaker. On this first day of school this year, I received a letter from my daughter's school informing me that there were unacceptable levels of lead in the water. The school is doing everything that they can, but the fact of the matter is, is that the Waterloo Region District School Board, where I once served as trustee and chair, does not have the funds to address systemic infrastructure needs. In fact, no school board in this province can make these fundamental maintenance upgrades on their own, be they furnaces, roofs, heating or cooling systems. Provincial governments at one time understood this and invested in education, but today we have a $16 billion backlog. But we're not here today at this emergency session on a Saturday in September discussing this important issue. We're here addressing the new culture of politics in Ontario, the Ford culture, which involves dismantling our democracy, with the introduction of the notwithstanding clause. This clause overwrites the basic charter rights in order to cut Toronto City Council in half, a decision that was already determined to be unconstitutional by a superior court judge. Uh, people are reeling from this move, Speaker, across this province. Uh, to quote the columnist Martin Reg Khan, that the Premier chose to invoke the notwithstanding clause for such a nonsensical cause, a grudge match, that, forgive me, rhymes with hissing match, is a gratuitous violation of our democratic norms. I believe the citizens of this province will remember this. I would urge my PC colleagues across the floor to vote your conscience and deny this Premier his revenge. Member statements. Member statements. Member for Ottawa Vanier. This weekend, in my riding of Ottawa Vanier, the Community Addictions Peer Support Association, CAPSA, is hosting its annual recovery day. I was supposed to be there this afternoon, and I want to say how sad I am that I cannot be there with them. Through its person-driven approach, CAPSA links individuals affected by addiction with the recovery services and a sense of community. Recovery Day celebrates the many pathways to recovery in our communities while striving to reduce stigma and raise awareness about addiction. I'm very proud to support organizations such as these and for the work that they do, and I am particularly happy to support CAPSA today in Ottawa. Le soutien de ces pairs lorsqu'on tente de Here's sortir d'une dépendance est crucial. Le soutien de la communauté nous encourage et nous donne de l'espoir. C'est ça le message de Recovery Day et je veux continuer de l'exprimer tout mon avis. Mental health care is a priority them. and I think we should stop working and trying to destroy local democracy and move on to support and, and increase the services to our fellow citizens. So I call on the Premier to step up to the plate act like the leader of Ontario, not the mayor of Toronto. Stop trampling on local democracy, and please come up and do what your job is supposed to do. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, I want to bring forward to the House uh, something that is happening in Sudbury uh, right now. Our, our hospital, Health Sciences North, is facing an $11 million deficit. Um, they were really encouraged when they heard the Premier said, say that there would not be any layoff of nurses, uh, that he would make sure that moving forward uh, that hospital would be staffed uh, with the right amount of personnel to look after us. Well, this is not at all what is happening. In Sudbury right now, we are, have already lost 70 nurses. And just this week, Health Sciences North announced that it is closing their breast screening clinic, uh, which helps women who are diagnosed with breast cancer uh, access services in a timely fashion. Um, here we are, uh, sitting on the weekend. Uh, this is extremely important to the people I represent, but we're not going to be talking about health care. We're not going to be talking about uh, the needs of these women who are uh, go for their um, mammography, are diagnosed, and then are put onto endless wait lists before they are helped. Uh, we're going to be talking about a non-withstanding clause uh, that the, the Premier wants to come forward. There are some real needs out there. There are promises that have been done to people who count on this government uh, to be there for them. And those are the people I represent, and those are the priority that this chamber should be uh, occupied with. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. Member statements. 
Member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I had an opportunity last night to go canvassing in my riding, uh, talking about the municipal election, and it was interesting to get first-hand response from people in my riding. And I should note that the Tories came second in my riding, the Liberals came third, so there were quite a few Tory voters there. People couldn't believe that the legislature was being derailed to go on this attack on Toronto. They understand what's important in this province. They understand the need to deal with jobs, the environment, education, health care. They couldn't believe that we were spending all this time on this tangent. Why on earth would the Premier do that? And there were other people who said, OK, I don't particularly like the size of council, but seriously, you're going to use the notwithstanding clause? Seriously? I thought this was for issues that were of national importance, importance across the province, and yet we're wasting our time doing that. I spoke to a parent whose child is in the third floor at Bruce Public School, where it hits well over 30 degrees centigrade. The kids are hot, and they aren't hearing from a government about how they're going to fix the schools. In fact, they cut $100 million that should have gone to fix those schools, $100 million, instead of dealing with those urgent issues that are on people's tables, we're here today talking about how to beat up on Toronto. This is a waste of time and, frankly, a betrayal of that government's mandate. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Tamiskaman Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. In June, we had a provincial election, and people of Northern Ontario thought that it was an election for the province. Yet here we're in a manufactured crisis about a case, a case that the government's created about Toronto. Let's talk about real crises in this province. Speaker, for a child with mental problems, a mental illness, with suicidal thoughts, the average waiting time in the province to see professional counseling is 20 days. In 20 days. In the, district, in the district of Cochrane, in the district of Cochrane, if a child with mental illness expresses suicidal thoughts, the average wait time is 400 days. In the case of many children, that is longer than a lifetime. And Lawrence come to order. That, that is a crisis. And that is a case of something that we could have. It's an emergency that's happening right now. It's one that was already created. There's lots of things to fix. You don't have to manufacture the problems. There are huge problems to deal with already. Please do it. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements.